Destiny 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, and in my opinion, vastly better than Destiny 1. And with only a few remaining raids and exotics to bring into D2, 21 seasons of content, and much more time to develop the game in metas, it's got more than ever. But it's getting to the point where I don't know how it will keep going forward. The main issue is that it's getting very bloated. With so many different things, it makes it hard to make something new and interesting without cannibalizing the old stuff. And in my opinion, we are truly on the downhill for this game. And the recently released State of the Game news post doesn't inspire much confidence as it only scratches the surface of real problems because we all truly wanted to have that returning Dreaming City Gambit map back. Yeah, that's gonna solve that problem. If you're not aware, we are nearly nine years into the game series, six of which are in Destiny 2, with a projected one to two years left in the Light and Dark Saga, which may or may not signal the dawn of Destiny 3. And in all that time, there's been a lot that's happened. Dozens of raids and dungeons, countless new activities, and thousands of guns, armors, exotics, and cosmetics. And I should make it clear that the following thoughts are my perspective of what's going on as a very veteran player with over 10,000 hours in the series which is important because new players will have loads of new activities and guns to get, knowledgeable tutorials online to learn from, and well-established third-party apps that are already built on the game that make it much easier. But as a veteran, I really can't give a f about most new things. I mean, I have over 5,000 of the 6,000 items in collection, with over 100,000 bright dust, 20,000 legendary shards, 40 fully completed seals, nearly every gun and armor I could possibly want, with dozens of fully leveled craftable weapons, nearly 1.5 million kills, and hundreds of raid completions. And I'm not saying this to brag, but if a new DLC releases with anything somewhat similar to what I already have, it won't matter. For example, no new 140 kinetic hand cannon will ever be better than my god roll Faebringer. Well, uh, unless... Unless it is. Which is the other half of the problem. Power creep. And this is defined as the gradual unbalancing of a video game due to the release of new content leaving older content underpowered. And let's be honest, why get the new stuff if the old stuff is about the same? Why spend hours grinding for a certain god roll when the last one you grinded hours for might be better? Okay, so let's make the new stuff slightly better, right? Wrong. If you don't remember, Year 1 Season 1 of Destiny 2 looked a whole lot different than it does now, Year 6 Season 21. Weapons originally dropped as a static roll with a few options like Barrel, Mag, and Intrinsic Trait. And now they have a random roll pool across 4-5 to five main perks, an Origin Trait, a Masterwork Bonus, a Potential Adept Bonus, Useful Mod Slot, and now even Craftable Enhanced Intrinsic Traits. Armor started off with an option between something like Resilience and Recovery. And now they have up to 70 base stats per armor piece, bonus stats for specific mods, Masterwork Bonus stats, a potential potential artifacts armor stat bonus, four armor mod slots with hundreds of different useful mods, and they can have any pre-acquired ornament to fit your look. And these comparisons go on, from the exotics that had to be buffed or totally revamped to keep up, subclasses changed multiple times to get to their 3.0 versions, catalyst bonuses, cosmetics, difficulties, rewards, styles, etc. They even started the game with white, green, and blue engrams dropping from the world to give us a sense of rarity in our drops, and these days only purples and exotics dropped and removing the blue engrams broke the game multiple times. And don't even get me started with these core playlists. In the last two years, I think we got one new PvP map, which is widely known as people's least favorite map, zero new Gambit maps and meaningful updates, and honestly, as a PvE player, I don't even play strikes anymore. And the new content seems to always be focused on some new activity, which is often a reskin activity in a new setting with some weird offshoot of story that often doesn't make sense until seasons later. And to boot, we always have to wait throughout the season to get many of these content drops instead of getting it right away, which obviously is a content speed limit for replayability. And even the last bigger expansion style DLC, Lightfall, which often defines the next year of content, was poorly received for the lack of story explanations, fun and continuing repeatable content and guns to seek, and an endgame raid that was supposed to be the ultimate reveal of the wit and Nezrek, the source of the darkness ship and nightmares fell very short, and now we have a pink triangle on the Traveler? Big whoop. We're getting to the point that World of Warcraft has been in for almost decades, where probably 95% of the game, map, items, and content are not used and underpowered compared to every new expansion. And I'm sure that there's a lot of things that can be learned from the problems that WoW continues to face that Bungie can use in Destiny 2. And of course, the opposite approach would be something like Call of Duty, where three companies take turns to make a new game every year with about the same stuff and a new skin. And to be honest, these two different kind of approaches are really not that different. It really makes you wonder if every new game or DLC is just a reorganization of the same stuff we saw before with better graphics. Furthermore, maybe every experience in life is really just an updated reorganization of human existence with some new tech. When we get to Halo 17, I'll let you know. Although I'm pretty sure we're like 15 plus games into Call of Duty and it's still selling. 22? What? Damn, Call of Duty, you be, you be chunking those out, huh? <laughs> 
That all being said, I think that a lot of these changes and additions to Destiny 2 were good and necessary, with the festering affliction of power creep and stagnation coming. And I honestly have very little idea of what they can do. To me, it feels like they're in a holding pattern until they can finish the Light and Dark Saga and hopefully release Destiny 3 to wipe the slate clean and start the cycle again. Maybe I'll be making this same kind of video in six years about Destiny 3 while waiting for Destiny 4, The Witness Strikes Back. <laughs> and so I ask you, the audience, what can they do to fix this downhill slide? How will it be received by new players and veterans? Will the solution make them enough money to continue as a business? Or is there not as much of a problem as I think there is? Let me know in the comments down below. Either way, that's going to be the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name's Nightchronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.